What's up, everyone? Tyler Tambolin here, aka Toe Tag and Tambo, back for another edition of the Prize Picks DK NFL Show for Week Eight. And I got my guy filling in. We went opposite weeks. Last week was JT Hayes and Bobby Gomes. This week we got my guy Bobby G here with the main man Triple T. What's happening, Bobby Gomes? How you doing this week, man? Doing good, doing good. Glad to be here. JT took me down in the with the Cordero Patterson. Uh, we went head to head with Cordero Patterson <laughs> prize picks that. last week, and uh, JT got me. So here to redeem myself. Yeah, I love that, man. That's good that you're coming back and bouncing back. But I love a good little battle. We got all the Run Pure guys. You're over at Run Pure Sports. JT, myself, we talk about the Off the Chalk show. You and I actually do a show every Friday evening. It's a free show right here on YouTube on the Run Pure Sports YouTube. You guys can check that out. Go over, subscribe. And while you're here right now, Mayo Media Network, like, subscribe, get on board. We've got these shows every week. Love doing the show. Love the prize picks. Lots of money to be made there. And yeah, JT took a week off after I just did, but he did say, make sure you let them know, Tambo. You always got to let them know. I said, what's that? He said, you know the picks. CPAT and AJB, AJ Brown, both went over on their prize picks totals last week. So JT Hayes, man, he's on a heater. If you go back his last three weeks, I think he's five and one. So pretty incredible there. It's pretty solid overall. We're going to get into it here. For those that are joining for the first time, it's pretty simple. We're going to go through prize picks first. I've got a couple picks. Bobby Gomes got a couple picks. You can put them together. The Mayo Media Network has a little contest going on over there. So you can set it up. You do a five pick. Can't include the Monday night game, but you put $7.11 down. That's how it registers on the site. Go over. You can use our four picks and one of your favorites and put those together. They're scoring it for the entire season. Lots of money. $3,000 in site credits up top. There's other prizes as well. Thereafter, some really good prizes. Second is $2,000. Goes down from there. But if you aren't signed up yet on prize picks, definitely head over there. Use promo code MMN. And get yourself a first-time bonus get signed up and get after these picks. So Bobby Gomes got a week eight slate ahead of us. We're going to get to the DraftKings picks after the prize picks portion, but started off with your two picks for prize picks this week. Yeah. So I have the over, uh, no, the under for Chuba Hubbard and the over for Kamara just found out Mark Ingram's uh, on the New Orleans Saints. So might knock the, um, the Kamara over to the under, but I'm going to stick with the over on Kamara versus the Bucks. And on Chuba, um, I'm going to go up under his total on prize picks. Um, I think it's 65 and a half, uh, no, 68 and a half. I think the line, you're getting a little line value there. Um, true lines at 65, so that's where I'm, I'm going. Okay, yeah, I like that. Uh, we'll talk about it. The Camaro one uh, is fine. I think, like you said, with Ingram there, who knows what they'll do. I saw Sean Payton mention today that he's absolutely has a chance to see the field and get touches and et cetera, et cetera, with the interviews that he's had. But hey, you never know what's gonna happen there. And then Chuba, I got a little more interest in him. So we'll see how that one plays out. If we had our own bet this week between you and JT Hayes last week, I would take the over on that one. We'll, we'll talk to it when we get to the DraftKings running back section. But let me talk about mine first here on prize picks. I had a couple. I actually got a little mini stack and it's in a game that probably, so here, let me start over. This week is interesting, Bobby, because we've got 12 games, less buys, et cetera, no London games, all that factor. But we don't have very many totals 50 plus, right? I think there's one total at 50, one at 49 and a half, maybe two that have just, maybe that one just touched 50 actually. We've got two at 50, but they're right at 50. So that's kind of the thought process here on the early. So it's Thursday night recording this. You guys are listening Friday morning, most likely, but that makes it a little bit different. I've actually went to a game that's just way off the board. This total doesn't even have a 40 in it, but I've talked about this in past weeks being on here with JT Hayes about how you can go on prize picks and you can sort of correlate your picks a little bit, much like we do in a DraftKings in a lineup, like we'll talk about later, where you can have a secondary stack. And I'm going to start off, I like Elijah Mitchell, over 66 and a half yards. I think that's a good number for him here. I've talked about this tidbit a few times in the past on this show and shows over at Run Pure Sports, how when he was at Louisiana in college, they sent somebody over to follow the Kyle Shanahan offense, to dig in, to find it out, to go back and utilize it because they believe in it. Shanahan offenses have always been a little bit special in that sense. And so they trusted him. Elijah Mitchell came over. He knows the offense a little better than most, and they've utilized him in that sense. I mean, just last week looked pretty comfortable. I think it goes both ways, but in the loss at home, still went 18 for 107. That's a lot of breathing room on a 66 and a half total here. So the over 66 and a half rush yards for Elijah Mitchell is one that has my interest. 
And then this one seems way too low when you think about the name and on paper, the other side. But then you think about what the seasons looked like last week, et cetera, Justin Fields, all those factors. But I'm going with Allen Robinson over 40 and a half yards receiving. Obviously, that correlates nicely. If we get Mitchell rolling on the ground, maybe they're down. Chicago has to come back. Obviously, Robinson can get there on just volume alone in some cases, but it hasn't been as strong. And we saw Justin Fields, the, the memes that were coming out of him sitting on the sidelines last week, very disappointed, looked a little bit disgruntled with what's going on, but it's partially because of him. I mean, I'm sure he knows. But this correlates with the above. Uh, most people think of San Francisco pretty good defense, but if they're down, that's the thing. And you got Chicago at home. I think A-Rob can get over 40 and a half yards. So uh, I think even without the you know the potential of being down in the game, he could still get there. And we just saw Michael Pittman drop over 100 on them. So again, not saying it's the same, but realistically, Robinson should be better. He's just always stuck with these quarterbacks. Any thoughts on that game, Mitchell, Robinson, those picks in general, Bobby? I like the correlation. Um, just thinking to do that on prize picks, it makes a ton of sense. Uh, yeah, pretty good lines. Like, obviously, Elijah Mitchell, he's coming in San Francisco. Everyone's on Trey Sermon, and now looks like Mitchell's the guy. Uh, I remember we talked about, like, best ball late, or, like, in the summer, and you kind of brought up Mitchell. So he was someone I was drafting in best ball because of that, because he talked about the system. Thought it was pretty interesting um, later rounds, obviously, but I have a little exposure there. Uh, yeah, I like the prize picks. I think those are good plays. I really like correlating them. I just think that's something that people don't think about as much, where if one happens, the other one can. And we look for it in daily fantasy, and we talk about it all the time. It relates to sports betting. But if you're building a nine-person lineup, and we're about to segue into DraftKings anyway, so it kind of correlates with that. But when you're building a nine-person lineup, we know everyone knows to stack, but the secondary stacks, the third stacks, all those things that make sense that sort of put it all together – is just making it almost into like a sports betting parlay where, listen, it's hard enough to hit a three or four game parlay, but why put yourself in a position to have to hit a five or six gamer in theory when you're thinking about putting this stack of one, one, and one. So you got, you know, a, a quarterback, wide receiver, and a run back, but then the rest are all just random plays. You just need so many random events to happen versus trying to tie it together. And I utilize that on prize picks as well. I think it's a great way that you can go about it. So Let's hop into it, though, Bobby. I like this slate. It's week eight. I talked about it last week. If week seven wasn't lucky seven, then week eight can be great. And that's why we're dialing in. That's why I always remember the weeks, put a name to them. Let's talk about it position by position. On DraftKings, we do it pretty simple. Every position, two picks per position. Both of us will give you, and I've got some bonus picks today. I'm feeling good about this one, Bobby, so I'm throwing a few extras out there. But let's start at the quarterback position and just talk to me in general. Who are a couple of guys you're on this week over on DraftKings for the quarterback position? Yeah, Josh Allen, I think he makes a ton of sense. Uh, Jalen Hurts, Tom Brady, they're like pretty much the usual, especially with these total, like the implied team. Like if I was playing cash, I'd be playing, looking at Jalen Hurts. I think for tournaments and well, not Jalen Hurts necessarily, but I think you definitely throw Josh Allen in the mix. But uh, implied team totals for guys. Uh, Brady is around 32 and a half. Uh, Josh Allen's is up there, I think, at 31 and a half. So these are just totals that I'd be attacking. Um, you can even throw Stafford in there, 31, 31 and a quarter. So uh, those are pretty much the, main, the QBs that I'm kind of focused on. Yeah, I like looking at the totals there. I like your thoughts on those guys make a ton of sense. I, I'm glad you mentioned Stafford. He was the first one I was going to bring up. So you got Stafford on the road. I know it's the lowly Texans. And I think first inclination will be for most to go back to Daryl Henderson, right? Even though he he didn't do what he was supposed to do last week, everybody played him. Normally you would think flop lag. Here we go. Get on Henderson. And I don't hate it. I'm not saying to go off of Henderson. What I'm saying is a lot of people just are, you know, DFS has moved further. People are getting better. There's a lot more content like this out there for free that people can get. To think about it and i think a lot of people just go back there but for me i'm not afraid to put henderson into my stafford lineups i will i never was and i most certainly am not now if you look back nine targets in the last two weeks of receiving td all within the mix of things that he's been doing six targets last week even when he busted so there's a way to go back to him that you can play him and still play him with stafford the other thing i like about stafford is his guys are pretty shifty with the ball. You get Van Jefferson, Woods, Cup, all those dudes to get the ball. They can do a lot with it. Higby, don't forget. And realistically, that's the, the target tree. There's those three, four, five guys. If you include Henderson, you put those guys together, put them in pairs of two and mix them up. And I think you can go after that. And Van Jefferson's sort of an outsider that you don't have to put in there. Cup, Woods, Higby. And don't be scared to put Henderson. There's your stack. So I definitely like Matt Stafford. And then Justin Herbert. 
Another guy that stands out to me. So he's at home. I think it's a 49 and a half total as of now. We'll see where that goes. But against New England, I think the Pats can stay enough in the game. Mac Jones hasn't looked horrible. They've you know, a lot of passing attempts in most of his games, a lot of tries at it. So it's hard to look bad when you get that many chances. But man, they put up 54 points last week. I'm not expecting anything like that here. Totally different matchup. Much better team. We'll have to see with the Eckler news. This afternoon, Eckler did not practice. We just the news came out, so we'll see what happens there. It is Thursday now, so we'll see what goes on over the weekend. But even without him, you got other guys there, right? We'll talk about them later, most likely. But I know you always like a good Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, something like that. You can mix and match within with Herbert, and I think they can keep it close. So we'll go with Justin Herbert and Matt Stafford for myself this week. Any thoughts on that? And then bring us into the running back position for yourself. Yeah, both Stafford and Herbert, I think, are really good plays. Uh, you talked about stacking Stafford with Henderson, and we saw two weeks ago that really worked out. You talked about the nine targets. Last week, Henderson, the chalky, he was kind of like a pretty easy tournament fade for me last week. I think a way to kind of play him this week is to play him with Stafford because a lot of people are just going to play him by himself or, well, they're, they're obvious. It's just a different, it's just a way to play him differently, right? Um, so I like yeah. that. And then on top of Herbert, like, that team's just the offense has been great. You're talking about the total in that game. I I, I like the Herb. Herbert has the rushing equity as well. It's kind of sneaky on the slate. A lot of people are going to go to Hertz for the rushing equity. A lot of people are going to go to Josh Allen, but Hertz, but Herbert has it as well. So uh, don't mind those calls at all. Yeah, and the one thing you said there, I think, is just key, and that's what I was trying to get in on was with the Henderson. Either people go away. Some will still go away and say, oh, he screwed me last week. I'm not going to fall for that again, and I'll get off of him. Or they'll talk themselves into that they're on the road, and even though it's an easy matchup, maybe it's not him. Maybe it's a Sony game. Maybe you never know what people will bring into their mind, and then that translates what goes into their lineups. But at the same time, like you said, the ones that do play may just go back to him and yeah. overlook the fact that you can still get a Stafford Henderson cup lineup for basically that to me would be the red zone. If if it's Woods and those guys, I'll have some mixtures of them because I'm heavy on Stafford. But the point would be when you think about when they get down to the red zone, cup has been hot. They're going to stick with him. The hot hands working. My God, this guy's oh crushing my God, it. Dude. And then you've got Henderson every week. If it's not them, so you can pick those points up anyway, and maybe he gets another receiving touchdown or something like that. The targets are there, and Henderson's pretty good with the ball in hand. So I think there's lots of opportunity that you can go to there. Talk to me about this running back position, though, this week, and then I'll get into mine. Yeah, you can kick it off with Henderson. Like you said, I think people are going to play him by himself, and like we talked about it, it being differentiated by playing him with Stafford, he would be my favorite. DeAndre Swift. I think he's very much in play at 7,100. He's looking like a really good play to me versus the Eagles. Um, just works well in the passing game. Has all the usage to get there. Don't mind going to him. Uh, Elijah Mitchell, Mitchell, you talked about it. Like they're using him in San Francisco. Obviously, the Bears run D isn't necessarily what it was in the past. Um, so I don't mind going there. Hubbard, he's going to pop for a lot of people. Not really sure what to do on Hubbard right now. I have the under on the prize picks. Uh, if he gets too chalky versus the Falcons, Maybe I um, go away from it, but if he's going to be, I don't know, Hubbard's a, Hubbard's a good play, right? It's just a matter of um, trying to get different in tournaments and if I want to really play that chalk. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about when I mentioned that earlier with you said I'll take the other side of your prize picks on it because for me, I think he's kind of interesting. He's still got all the opportunities. Last week he did bust for people and against sort of the opposite effect of what I said earlier with Henderson. We've already talked about Mitchell, Henderson, those guys, but with Henderson – people will be likely to go back. They'll just say, oh, it was a bad week. Let me take him. With a guy like Chuba Hubbard, I don't know if it's his name or what it might be that sometimes just throws people off, but they're like, yeah, I'm not going back to Chuba. Forget this or Hubbard, whatever you want to say. I'm not doing that. So sometimes it comes down to that and you think about it in that sense, but he still has had all the opportunity. Even last week wasn't a bad week for opportunity, just a bad week for results. And sometimes that's where I'd be more inclined to look past and say, look, the matchup against Atlanta, everything that's here in front of him now, there is some other guys I'll talk about when we segue into the, the wide receiver position. But for right now, I think that's interesting. So Mitchell, Henderson, Chuba. And then the other guy I was going to talk about was, you know, in spirit for JT Hayes, who's not here this week. I got to bring up CPAT again, because listen, Mike Davis is there and we know it. And they've been trying to make it work and he gets his <clears> seven or eight DK points every week. But that's not what we're looking for in tournaments. And realistically, if you think about it, CPAT has just been getting almost like CPAT has almost been like CMC getting the opportunities in the, through the air, on the ground, shifty stuff, end arounds, all these things, and he is capable. It's just taking coaches forever to get after it with this guy. I know 
Uh, Ian Harditz, who's a great follow on Twitter, has been trying to make this happen forever, and he's excited about everything that's been going on with Patterson. But I think this game could be pretty interesting back and forth. What are your thoughts on Patterson again, one, and then two, just this Carolina-Atlanta game as a whole, chalk aside, everything, just how you think it could play out? Yeah, I think you'd really stack up this game. And that's why I was trying to get different by not playing Chuba and kind of playing the passing game. We'll kind of get into DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson. I know Robbie Anderson has been atrocious, but hopefully this is the week, right? Like it, we would hope that versus Atlanta Falcons pass that he could get going. Um, yeah, I think it's in terms of like Cordell Patterson, he would be, he seems like a very good tournament play. He would be my kind of pivot off Chuba in that sense. Um, if I was stacking up this game, just makes just, way to differentiate yourself relative to how the field's going to play on uh, the construction. And then for me, um, yeah, Calvin Ridley, I like him in this game as well. So I guess we can kind of transition in a wide receiver if you want to go. Yeah, feel, feel free. Yeah. Take, take us over there. I like the Calvin Ridley start. So let's roll it out with that. And then talk yeah. about the other wide receivers you got over on. So Calvin Thompson. Ridley's just seen a ton of usage lately. Um, he was a guy that a lot of people went to last week. He really kind of, he got there, but not to the extent that like he could get there, like where he can has the slate breaking potential. I think you could do it this week. First, the Carolina Panthers secondary um, talking about DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson. I think these guys are also in play. Um, Darnold has not looked good. That's the issue. I think he kind of turns around this week versus a lowly Atlanta Falcons secondary. Uh, Chris Godwin's another guy. I think he's going to be very much in play at that price tag and play for cash. Um, and Brandon Cooks, I don't, you, people don't want to run back this. Like you don't want to run back. If you want to wanted to run back the Stafford stacks, I think Brandon Cooks is very much in play. Jeez, we're done at wide receiver. You stole all. I know that's it's it's tough when it goes from when it's a couple guys from uh, just one <laughs> position. Man, you just crushed me. But I, you know, I was gonna say I talked about Allen Robinson. I already like that. I think that'll definitely translate over to DK for me. I just think he's got so much talent and I know it's Justin Fields and it hasn't quite clicked yet, but I feel like this could be the week when they're at home. There's been talks of it already. Obviously Justin Fields wants to play better. Some will say he's not the guy. It's hard to disagree, but they're, they're giving him the reps so he can get the experience. How can you say he's not the guy when you're eight week eight and there was other guys in there. Dalton was in there, et cetera. Like you you got to give him a shot, man. Like, and when you come in on other times, he can run in a few touchdowns or something, but I do like the setup with him and Allen Robinson. So I'm going to go with Allen Robinson. You mentioned Brandon Cooks, just another guy. Um, a lot of people, myself included, had last week, and he just completely failed us all. It just wasn't a good week. But, man, seven-plus targets in every game except one this season. And if I'm playing those Rams like I am, you're going to need a run back. So I think he makes some sense going Brandon Cooks there. And then it's kind of a tie for me in the second tier. So you already gave the, the secondary tie was the Carolina guys. I like more. I like Robbie Anderson. Again, I don't even know. Like they can, it, it's not that Darnold's good. He, he's not, he hasn't been, he's, you know, had a few rushing touchdowns wish, things like that. Go ahead. I wish they would kind of give PJ Walker a start just to see. Just to see. Just to see. I would, yeah, I would like that. I'd like to see that too, actually. That'd be a lot of fun, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. There's still a long season ahead of us. Anything could happen. But what I will say is the thing about Darnold is he doesn't necessarily have to be good because sometimes you can just get that little lowly check down to a guy like DJ Moore and he can just house it because he's that good yards after catch with the ball in hand ability wise, not necessarily the sample size guys that are going to say, well, in the last three games, he wasn't actually good on yards after catch. Well, it don't matter. We're talking about DJ Moore here. The guy's super young, super talented, tough, strong, physical, everything. It, does, it just takes one. Uh, it could be a, a secondary guy slipping. And next thing you know, he's off to the races into the house. And that is not an advocacy for saying get Darnold in your lineups. I'm just saying that you can use these receivers, even if you want to play just one of them. And then Anderson, man, I feel like we've been trying to make this happen. We've been forcing it. Throbby Robbie, as we like to call him over at Run Pure Sports. Man, there's nothing to be throbbing about, though. This has not been good. So we'll have to see. Maybe this is the week. I think both those two make sense. And then Keenan Allen is just always the guy I like. Feels like there's not as much of a ceiling there anymore, but it just takes one of those 11-141 type games that we know that he can put up. And that with Herbert alone could be more than enough to push you over the edge. So uh, leave it at that at wide receiver. I think we got enough plays out there. I like the Ridley call. Uh, again, guys like Ridley, DeAndre Hopkins, those guys this season just haven't blown everyone away. But it's not like they've played bad, right? They've they've had good games. They'll put up their 15 to 20 or something here and there, but they just haven't had those 30 plus games. And when they do, 
then it's not a surprise. So that's why I like going to a guy like Ridley, how you mentioned him there and utilizing some of the, you know, secondary stacks, even if you wanted like that game, you could have Chuba who I'm a little bit higher on than you, I think, but you mentioned you were trying to get different. I'm just saying if I, if I played Chuba and just ran it on the other side with Ridley and hope that I get some action that way, I don't have to be on Darnold or on Matt Ryan. And that's just as of now, that's my thoughts. I just think of ways you can go about it to be a little bit different, but let's move on. Let, let's talk about tight end. Uh, a couple of picks you got this week over on DraftKings, then I'll give mine right after. I got I to gotta think about my second one a little more. I'll bring it up and we'll talk about it. But you give me yours first. Yeah, so basically looking at just kind of seeing who I'd like to – Dan Arnold at 2,800 or 2,600, whatever he is on DK, seems like he's going to be a play that a lot of people are going to have interest in, maybe the cash game tight end. I think Jared Cook's in play, although Donald Parham has been eating into that workload overall. Ricky Seals-Jones, another guy. Um, for me, I, I think I would consider him just because of all the work that he's getting in the passing game. And then Dallas Goddard would be another guy that, for Jalen Hurts, I think he makes sense to, like, just obviously stack him up in that way. Uh, if you're single stacking Hurts, Goddard's probably outside of Devontae Smith would be my favorite uh, call there. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned – I'm going to – for the record, you mentioned Arnold, then Cook, then RSJ. And the reason I'm repeating for you is because not letting you steal Goddard. He was your fourth man. We only go to two <laughs> or three here, Bobby. So I know I, I got to get my Goddard that. pick back from that. you. You can have it. You can have it. You can have Goddard. Yeah, okay. No, I like it. I like those calls you made. I like how you put them out. Like Arnold and Cash might end up being a thing. We'll have to wait and see. When we record so early, sometimes, you know, folks might forget that. Things definitely change. You need to stay after the news. You need to stay on top of things. And the best place to do it is Run Pure Sports. We talk about it all the time. But we've got the show, the Friday News Dump. Myself, Bobby Gomes, Holden Kushner, we're all on there talking about the news and how it pertains to DFS as the week goes on. So check that show out Friday evenings. Uh, 515 Eastern time, I believe is the, the setup or 415 Eastern time. I, I should be correct here. So 415 Eastern time on Friday nights, that show is free. And then myself and JT Hayes, if you really miss them, I miss them, but I still love Bobby too. But myself and JT Hayes are on the Sunday morning show off the chalk. It's free. It's at 745 Eastern time, very early over on uh, YouTube. You guys can check that out. It's free as well. But I like Dallas Goddard back to the tight end position here on DraftKings. I think this, Bobby, did just enough last week. It was a fair price last week. The price bump is probably warranted when you think about how many snaps he played. The dude almost played every snap of the game. So many dropbacks. He was right there. I think he can easily have a, a touchdown or two here. And I say easily. Two touchdowns is not easy, but I'm saying without Ertz in the pitcher and the snaps he got last week and the share and everything that he was involved with, I, it wouldn't surprise me if he had two touchdowns. This is a better way to put it. So I'm definitely going to be in on Goddard this week, and I hope the little bit of the price bump scares people off some. Not that it'll scare them off completely, but they might not think of him as sort of an elite tight end that is up around 6K. That, that's a bit much. People might think that's sort of an overpay. I'm hoping at least. If not, it doesn't matter. I'll be overweight. We'll have enough. The other guy, the reason I said I got to think about this, so Kyle Pitts, I know the matchup this week is tough, sort of a little lockdown defense there. We talked about this Carolina-Atlanta game. That's why I got your thoughts earlier on on it. And you didn't mention him, but, you know, since the London game where we finally got the Kyle Pitts that we expected, but no one could play him on the main slate, he's just had a couple good games. And even last week, no touchdown, but seven for 163. Price jumped up a little bit. You know, people might want to, but I don't know, maybe the matchup will scare people off. Solid ceiling, though, either way. What, what are your thoughts on Kyle Pitts here? What do you think about that? Yeah, so for Pitts, like, it's funny. He's, he smashes in London, and we're just – we've all been playing him for weeks, and then we can't play Every him. week. Every week we're just playing him, playing him, kind of like the Robbie Robbie situation, but uh, Robbie actually plays on the slates that we're playing. Um, yeah, so I don't mind Pitts. I think he's a really good play. Obviously has shown a rapport recently with Ryan that we haven't seen – well, we didn't see in the first three games, right? So I like the Pitts call for tournaments. Definitely think, think it makes sense. It's another way to kind of stack up this Carolina-Atlanta team. I'm with you on Kyle Pitts. I, I, I think he's a good play. Yeah, I, I worry just a little bit. I forget the guy's name on Carolina, but he's been sort of a lockdown versus tight ends. And, and that's the only thing I can think of. But at the same time, to me, and I always talk about this in, in everything, golf, NFL, DFS, is every sport that I play DFS in, realistically, like sometimes these – Sample sizes are just so small to go on. Oh, he's been locking down. And then what? Locking down an exact position? Like Kyle Pitts isn't even a tight end. It's just what his position says on the board. 
the guy can play anything. He can do anything. So I, I don't know. I think I talked myself into it. I'm not too scared of it. And I always look for spots like this. If others are, if others think the price jump or now he's going to regress back to the first few weeks, realistically, I think that that was sort of a, an issue. And that's why we were playing him at those prices. We just suspected we would never see him at those prices again. It just sucked. It didn't work out, but it just means he would have got to this price tag sooner. So for me, not a big deal. I like anytime I'm hoping if he goes low owned, we'll see. But anytime guys like this are lower owned, I always like to get after them. The Kelsey's, the Wallers, the Mark Andrews, Pitts is definitely in that class when it comes down to it. So I'll definitely say that. Uh, let's talk about, we talk about it on here, guys. Not every show will give you some defense takes. And listen, we know that defense is a highly variable position. You can put a cap of 20% and spread it out and do things. But we do like to talk about it a little. And I've got a few thoughts on it myself this week. But Bobby, start us off at defense and just any thoughts you have in general, maybe some plays you like down at defense. Yeah, I think the Washington football team is going to be like the median projection uh, defense, so pretty much the cash game defense. I usually X that out in tournaments. Uh, Jaguars and Browns, I think they're also in play. Um, those teams would be teams that I would consider just because obviously Jaguars are going up against Geno, and they have a pretty good price at 2400 And then the Browns, um, they're getting banned in the Steelers, which we've kind of been streaming uh, defenses versus all year. I try to find a defense that I can kind of – like if I see ownership, like – Take, for instance, two weeks ago with Kareem Hunt, like I played Arizona Cardinals defense just because you get that leverage um, when someone is extremely chalky. I don't know if that is really available to us this week. I don't know what the Falcons price is. If Chuba kind of gets up there, um, not really looking to play the Falcons D though. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I got for D. What, what about in your end? Yeah, I like the Jags call that you mentioned. That was sort of my first thoughts was even just the the thoughts on that game of the Jags and Seattle, like either or, obviously you can only play one, but my point would be Trevor Lawrence can definitely make some mistakes. And then that's the other thing too. So Gino can make big mistakes. So I think the Jags is the better side and they're cheaper. And hey, by the end of the week, we could even see them as the cash game defense where people catch on to that and just say, listen, it's Gino Smith. But the thing I like about both quarterbacks in that game is it's not just going to be, or most likely, um, you know, I can't predict the future, but it's most likely not going to just be a handoff game where we just have these quarterbacks handing off. They are going to, there's going to be enough opportunities for the defense to get action where we could see them score and have some of that variance fall in our favor. So first off, I would say that the second team that I'm thinking about, and we'll see how popular they get. Listen, it's, you know, a little bit pricey at 3,600, but the Bengals going up against the Jets. It could get popular because we've got a backup here in Mike White, right, with with Zach Wilson out, so on and so forth. But this is the thing I will say, the, the word of caution, and why I'm not super high on this, but it was more so just a conversation piece I wanted to talk about with you, is that, listen, the Bengals should be popular because they're against a the backup. The price is fair at 3600 It's not 5 k or 4900 anything crazy, but it's not 2200 Sometimes you'll have the money left over for that. People land there and feel good about it. But the word of caution is this. When you have a backup, like a guy like Mike White going in there, sometimes it's the opposite situation of Seattle and Jacksonville where the teams will just say, listen, we don't want to put him in the line of fire. It's first time out here. We want to just hand the ball off, see what we can do. And I didn't talk about Michael Carter earlier at the running back position, but man, he's actually looked pretty good. The opportunities could go up for a guy like him and we could just see them handing it off. So if you want another sneaky play and you stayed till the end, I think Michael Carter at running back could be a guy you go to this week while they have, you know, people are playing the Cincinnati D against Mike White or people think there's no way you can play anybody from the Jets. He's just a guy I think you could roll with. And then the other thing is, Bobby, this is a way to really get some crazy leverage on a, you know, in large field stuff at least, is play Michael Carter with the Jets D. If everyone's going to be on the Bengals D, so to tie it back in with defense here, you could go the opposite side of that. And it's not because... Cincinnati's not going to put up points. I'm not looking for a shutout here. I'm saying, listen, they're 2200 bucks for the Jets D. You are most likely going to get a lot of opportunities going against a one Joe Burrow who absolutely loves to chuck it. And by the way, Chase has been incredible. So Jamar Chase on the other side, I'm not playing this team for a shutout. I'm saying if you can get some opportunities against a guy like Joe Burrow, I'm not all in on this. I just think it's a way you could go to be a little bit different. And one of the reasons I would caution against the Bengals as you just think about it from a perspective of, yes, it's a backup, but it's a backup that probably isn't going to give you a lot of chances to get after him. Any thoughts elsewhere on the defense or any thoughts on anything I just brought up there? 
I like the Michael Carter call and I like correlating them with the Jets D. I think that becomes a really low owned uh, correlated stack. And I think that works for tournaments. Um, yeah, that's pretty, I think you cut, co we covered defense pretty well. I think I would say. Yeah. Like I said, a lot of people don't talk about it. We still like to bring it up just to give you guys some thoughts, but I do think uh, it's one of the ways I like to think about it anyway. You know, I it's do weird. spread it out. It's weird. But, a lot of people don't talk about it because I think it is like a big factor in terms of like your overall lineup construction, uh, hit defense, you're pretty much in a good spot. And and some weeks it literally breaks the slate and it's hard to predict. I get why people say don't spend time on it because it's impossible to predict. I, I get it. But then you can at least put your educated guesses into it for four or five of your top pieces at, you know, 20 to 15% range down, going down, and then let the rest spread out at, you know, eight to 5% or whatever you end up with eight to 3%. I'm okay with that. But what I'm saying is more like you just mentioned, it still could be a little bit of an edge where you could try to get after where most don't want to put time into it or focus. There is still ways to correlate it. There is still ways to leverage with it and like it or not. Hey, even when FanDuel used to have kicker on their site, it would still be a way to get after it and be different. So DraftKings has defense. We love it. We'll go with it. Anything else you want to talk about for this week, Bobby? Oh, uh, that's pretty like, should we, what do we have? Like flag plant plays? Like, what are we doing in terms of who's your, who's your hey, favorite we, play of the week? Do, you're, you, you're the guest. We can do whatever you would like, man. You're, you're a guest. Anything. If you want to do flag plant plays, give, give me your Bobby Gomes flag plant play of the week. I'm going to go Austin Eckler, 7,900. I think he's going to go under owned. Uh, I think he's going to smash first the Patriots this week. And He's my he's my flag, but we haven't really talked. We didn't really talk about him in the running back session. I was just kind of looking at his ownership. I thought he would be a little bit higher. He's shoot. He's coming around like five percent. Uh, really like that number for Austin Eckler. Yeah, we got to wait and see. Like I said, we'll see what happens with the uh, the practice report tomorrow because today's Thursday night. Friday, this will be out as we've mentioned, but we'll see. He didn't practice today, but if he's fine, I love it. He goes with my Herbert call, so I, I definitely think you know that's one of the running backs we were already stacking. With guys like you know Herbert with the with their quarterback, where not everybody stacks with the quarterback with running back. I think that one makes a ton of sense. I'm I'm gonna go with uh, Elijah Mitchell. I, I was on him for Prize Picks. I was on him for DraftKings. I'm just standing by it. Like people just don't want to play it because it's the San Francisco spot and it's Kyle Shanahan. Things are crazy, but the, he hasn't really done Kyle Shanahan things and switched it up on us. It's just people don't want to commit to it because it's still Elijah Mitchell and it's San Francisco. And it's Kyle Shanahan. For me, I'm okay with it. I love the prize picks play over 66 and a half. And I'm going one step further to say bust over 100 yards again this week against Chicago. So I'll roll that pick out for my play of the week. Awesome, Bobby. I appreciate you, man. Definitely appreciate you stepping in for JT Hayes. Love doing shows with you. Talked about it multiple times where you guys can find us on Friday night, 415 Eastern, over on YouTube on the Run Pure Sports channel. Hit the like button and subscribe for Mayo Media Network. And Bobby, let the people know where they can find you. Yeah, find me on Twitter, Bobby Gomes DFS, uh, and Run Pure Sports also. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter, this side at Toe Tag and Tampa. I got the new little logo unit up this week, so sick. It's sick. I, I was gonna, I was gonna comment. Looks, uh, looks, looks very snazzy. I like uh, the white RPS logo. Yeah, it's a tied me over. I got to get my little setup going on. So this week should be the week when I finally get it. I've been mentioning it for weeks now. Uh, for those that don't know, I've been going through a little bit of a move, renovation, everything that's been going on. So trying to get things dialed in and have sort of a full-time setup so I can just get back to providing the content, doing what I love to do, being out there with everybody, answering questions. Feel free to add me on Twitter. Hit me up there if you guys have any questions. Other than that, thank you and good luck.